Okay, so today we want to look at associations between two categorical variables. Um, so as I said in the last section, previously we've been looking at univariate data, just one variable. Um, and we're beginning now through this next chapter to start to look at um, bivariate data, so comparing two different variables. So over the next three lessons, we want to look at um, how we can determine whether or not there um, is or may be an association between the two variables. Um, and today we're going to look at two categorical variables. In the next lesson, we'll look at comparing a categorical variable and a numerical variable. And then in the third lesson, we'll look at comparing two numerical variables. So when we have two categorical variables, we can represent that data in a two-way frequency table, like the one we're seeing here. And in this two-way frequency table, we are seeing data related to um, a survey of 60 people who were asked their preferences on the brand of phone that they um, prefer. Um, and we've got the results in the table. So when we use a two-way frequency table, we generally record the explanatory variable in the columns, which is what we're seeing here. We're trying to see whether the sex of someone um, it affects the um, phone brand that they prefer. So sex is the explanatory variable in this instance, and it is in the columns. And um, phone brand preference is the response variable, and it is in the rows. Okay, so from the table we can see that more females preferred Apple phones than males, but we can also see that we didn't survey equal numbers of females and males. So the raw data in this form doesn't allow us to easily make comparisons, which is what we're trying to do here. So the first thing we need to do is convert the data into percentages. Now it's really important to understand that what we're actually interested in here is the percentage of the explanatory variable. So what we don't want to work out is what percentage of Apple users were female. What we want to work out is what percentage of females were Apple users. So we're dividing by the totals in the sex column, not by the totals in the phone brand column. So dividing by the totals in the explanatory variable um, column. Um, okay, so in this instance, to find the percentage of females that prefer Apple phones, 23 people out of 68 um, females and times by 100 to make it a percentage. Control enter for the decimal. Let's write them all to one decimal place here. A question in a test or an exam would, would tell you, specify um, the accuracy that you need to use. But for now, we'll go with 60.5%. Okay, then we've got two options for working out the percentage of females that prefer Samsung phones. We can do the same calculation. 15 out of 38 females preferred Samsung phones, multiplying by 100 to convert to a percentage. Uh, so that is 39.5%. We also could have worked um, the Samsung percentage out by subtracting the Apple percentage from 100%. Okay, for the males, 15 out of 22 preferred, oh, sorry, times 100. Uh, so 68.2% of males preferred Apple phones. Um, compared to this time, let's subtract it from 100 to find the um, percentage that prefer Samsung. So 100 minus that value up there. So that is 31.8%. Okay, so now we have data that we can make comparisons about. So when we're looking to decide whether or not there's an association, we're looking to compare the numbers in each row. Okay, so we're looking to see whether there is significant difference across males and females about the percentage of people that prefer, for example, Apple phones or Samsung phones. So we're looking along the rows for difference. Okay, the idea is sometimes people find it difficult to understand why we want the data be, to be different. Um, but that's exactly what's suggesting there may be an association. If, for example, we saw that 60% of females preferred Apple and 60% of males preferred Apple, then the inference isn't about gender. The inference is that 60% of all people prefer Apple phones. It doesn't matter what their gender is. Okay, so if we see a significant difference across the explanatory variable, so in this instance across the genders or the sex, then we can say hmm, the data is suggesting that actually bigger proportions of males in this instance prefer Apple phones. 
Um, you could also compare on the Samsung data. So larger proportions of females prefer Samsung phones compared to males. Um, but it's about comparing across a row, okay? There's absolutely no point in comparing um, the data in the column because the data in the column has to add to 100%. So if, you know, 60.5% of females prefer Apple phones, just the way percentages work tells us that 39.5%, so about 60% versus 40%, well, that's a biggish difference, but that's meaningless because that's just telling you that the data has to add to 100%. So we're comparing across the rows, across the um, explanatory variable. So we want to look at the different categories within the explanatory variable um, for a particular category in the response variable. Okay, so then we want to make some, so in talking about finding a significant difference, sorry, I should have stated, we're looking for at least 5%. I'm sure there would be situations where they're looking for a stronger difference than that, or even perhaps might accept a weaker difference than that. But for our, our intents and purposes, we're going to look for at least 5% difference across the row. So in this case, we have that in both rows. So we could make a statement about that and we could use either row, either Apple or Samsung, um, to make the statement, but we don't need to do both. Okay. If there's an association in any one of the categories in the um, response variable, then there is potentially an association between the variables. Okay. So it doesn't have to be in both rows. It just has to be um, a significant difference in at least one row. Okay. So here we might make a, um, in answer to the question, is there an association between phone preference and the sex of the respondent? We might write something along the lines of what we see here. The percentage of females preferring Apple phones, and we need to always back our statements up with data. So percentage preferring Apple phones is 60.5% is significantly lower, significantly being at least 5% than for males, which is 68.2%. Hence, this data suggests an association between phone preference in sex. Throughout the data analysis unit, there's a number of places where we make um, explanations or justifications like this, and we always want to keep our language a bit vague. So we're just saying that this in this particular survey of only 60 people, there's a suggestion that there's an association. So we're not making any inference about the wider population. We're also not suggesting there's any cause. We're not saying males are more likely to do this, um, generally speaking. We don't have enough information to say that. But we're saying, based on this little survey here, there is a suggestion that there might be an association. Okay. All right, let's have a look at another example. So similar, a group of 650 people were asked their preferences on soft drink. Their responses are shown in the table opposite. So whether they prefer the brand of um, Pepsi or Coke and their sex is also recorded. We first of all want to convert the numbers to percentages. So let's just do that quickly so that then we can make a conclusion about whether or not there's an association. So we've got 221 out of um, 387 females prefer Pepsi times 100 to convert to a percentage. So that is 57.1%. Um, and therefore 100% minus that will give me the percent that prefer Coke, 42.9. Uh, in the male column, 155 males prefer uh, like Pepsi out of 263 males times by 100. Control enter, that is 58.9. Uh, and therefore we can either do 100 minus 58.9 or we can work out 108 out of 263 as a percentage, which should give us exactly the same answer, which is 41.1%. Okay, so these are our percentages. Obviously these would be 100%. That's the point of how we calculate the percentages. Okay, so then is there an association between soft drink preference and the sex of the respondent? Okay, so again, we're looking across the rows for at least a 5% difference, and we're actually not seeing that here. We're seeing that the, the proportion that prefer Pepsi is pretty similar across male and female, and so therefore there's not a suggestion that um, the sex of someone has a significant impact on whether they prefer Coke or Pepsi, okay? It's just looking like somewhere between 57 and 59% of all people prefer Pepsi um, versus 43 to 
sorry, 41 to 43% of all people preferring Coke. And again, this is a sample of 650 people. Being able to then make inferences from this to the wider population is something for a lot more statistical studies. Uh, so is there an association between soft drink preference and the sex of the respondent? Write a brief response quoting appropriate percentages. Okay, so we can choose whether we want to look at the Pepsi data or the Coke data. We don't need to do both, just one or the other. And then we want to make some sort of statement involving the percentages. So we might say something like, and this isn't the only possible response you could give, but we could go with 57.1% of females prefer Pepsi. which is similar to the proportion of males who prefer, sorry, we'll try that again, who prefer Pepsi. We need to give a statistic. Um, so that was 58.9%. Um, Hence, the data does not suggest an association between drink preference, drink brand, oh, just stick with the data as it's named, drink preference. And sex. So compare the data, quoting statistics, draw a conclusion about whether or not an association exists. Okay, another way that um, two categorical variables can be represented apart from the two-way frequency table is in a segmented bar chart. So with a segmented bar chart we can represent one of the categorical variables with categories along the horizontal axis and then we can represent the second um, categorical variable um, using the key. So the different categories being represented by the different segments in each of the bar chart, charts, in each of the bars, sorry, in the chart. Um, so here we have a situation where we're comparing um, two categorical variables, each with three categories. The previous examples we've looked at have had two categories. Um, and in this case, we're looking at comparing recycling rates that have been categorized as low, medium, or high. Um, and the size of a town, which is categorized as small, mid-size or large. So looking at the data or looking at the bar chart, again, we only need to find um, difference within one of the rows. Okay, So either amongst the um, low recyclers or the medium recyclers, recyclers or the high recyclers. Now, the other thing is, is that we don't need to see 5% difference between all three numbers. There just has to be at least that much difference with at least one of the numbers. Okay. So for example, if we look at the high rates of recycling, if we look at either the segmented bar chart, so the green sections or the bottom row of the table, the proportion um, who recycle at high rates is pretty similar um, in small and mid-sized towns, but significantly different in large towns. That's enough for us to say that there's an association between town size and um, recycling rates. There might not necessarily be that much difference between small and mid-sized towns, but the fact that there's such a big difference for large towns does tell us that there's a difference in recycling rates in, compared to the size of when looking at the size of the town. So just be clear about that. You don't need there to be a difference in all three categories. Okay. Um, so then uh, we might want to make a statement. Now, um, I crossed out the word steadily here because I think the increase isn't steady. It's a very small increase from small towns to mid-sized towns. Um, and then we make a big jump to large towns. You'll notice here also that I don't actually refer to all three um, categories. Um, I just make the statement that the data shows that the percentage of those who recycle at high rates increases with town size from 26.3% of those in small towns to 66.7% of those in large towns. Okay, so it does increase for the mid-sized towns as well, but it's not really significant. I'm just noting the jump comparing the smallest towns to the largest towns. 
This indicates that recycling rates are associated with town size. So again, make a comparison with statistics to support it, then draw a conclusion about whether or not there's an association. Okay, time for you to have a go. In the next video, we'll have a look at identifying associations when we have one categorical variable and one numerical variable. And we'll also have a look at the different ways of representing those. So for two categorical variables, representations are two-way frequency table or segmented bar chart.